Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with necromancers of the terrible empire of Ashran, who coveted the powers of resurrection centuries ago, and they prevailed when they invented a mask, that they used to conjure demonic spirits giving them amazing power. The mask was crafted from king's bones, and its strength was fueled by the pure blood of their daughters. With their strength, Ashran grew stronger, and crushed the other kingdoms, and only a tribe from the north, the barbarians, was able to conquer them, when they smashed the mask into pieces. The barbarians defeated Ashran, and the Dark Empire was destroyed. The mask's pieces were distributed and buried across the many kingdoms, to prevent any single individual from possessing such power again. Yet, prophecy predicted that a man would try to recover the mask and use its power. Many years later in the Haborian Age, a baby is born on the battlefield, from a warrior queen, Fiala. With her dying breath, she calls him Conan, and sends him over to his father, the Sumerian clan's leader, Karin. Conan was nurtured by a tiny clan of barbarians in Samaria. He's hungry to fight even before he's of age. This causes him to train more intensely than his peers, and even those older than him. Karin one day sends him and the other young lads of the clan into the wintry forest outside the hamlet, in a race to find Samaria's next young warrior. During the challenge, the other lads flee when they see warriors from an unfriendly neighboring tribe, plotting an ambush, but Conan is unfazed and continues. He is then trapped by the warriors, who want to execute him for trespassing. Unfortunately for them, he fights back and kills them all, before returning home with their heads. He is clearly determined to prove himself a true warrior after such a performance. Karin then brings him to the forge, where they create a blade together. He tells Conan that he isn't yet ready to wield the sword, but that it will be his when the time comes. A few days later, the settlement is assaulted by cavalry warriors from various clans. They are commanded by the primary antagonist, Kalar Zim, who intends to recreate Ashran's mask, in order to resurrect his deceased wife, Maliva, a strong sorceress with evil origins, who was murdered by fire. The Sumerian warriors fight back, gathering their weapons and mounting their horses to charge towards the attackers. In a few seconds, the settlement becomes a tense battleground, the barbarians do not go down lightly, but the Sumerians are defeated, and their leader is injured and taken to Kalar. Kalar explains to Karin that he is constructing an empire with the other clan heads, and that he should join them. He requests that the Sumerians be faithful to him in his cause, and also requests that the final piece of the mask be handed to him. Under severe suffering, Karin remains obstinate. In the meantime, Conan strives to save his father, and even chops the clan leader's nose clean off. However, he too gets subdued in the process. Kalar then begs his daughter Marik, who possesses extraordinary abilities, to find the remaining shard of the mask, which she succeeds in doing. She also snatches the sword that Conan and his father fashioned together. Kalar then sets fire to the settlement, and flees with his soldiers. Meanwhile, in an attempt to facilitate Conan's escape, Karin sacrifices himself. After the fall of Samaria, Conan spends the next 20 years journeying across various lands and seas, slaying and stealing like a vagabond, in search of the guy who destroyed his tribe. Along the journey, he meets artists in Zamora, who take him on board their ship, and become good friends. Together, they occasionally free slaves as they sail the seas. One evening, Conan and Artis search for slave masters at the Zingaran slave colony. They attack the slave masters right on the riverbank, with Conan putting on a gallant performance. He kills them and frees the captives. After that, they transport the slaves to a nearby area by the sea, called Mesantia, where they feast and celebrate their victory. At the feast, he recognizes one of the clan heads that invaded his town. The individual is identified as Lucius, the man whose nose he severed years ago. Lucius can be seen pursuing Allah Shan, an Argalon thief. Conan uses this chance to cause trouble with his men, before surrendering and being kidnapped by them. A couple of days later, and when the time comes, Conan attacks Lucius, and defeats all of his guards. He then begins to question him using a less sophisticated method of persuasion. Lucius reveals Collar's location, and his desire to find a pure blood. He explains to him that Marie can trace down the daughters of pure blood, and that the last descendant of that line is currently in Shipper. Therefore, they travel across the valley. This prompts Conan to plan an ambush of the ravine in Shipper, which is the route Collar would take to reach his fortress. Conan rushes off to find Collar, but not before unceremoniously delivering Lucius to the people he enslaved, to kill him. Allah Shan thanks Conan, and offers to assist him in his mission. Meanwhile, Collar and his daughter are on their way to Shipper Monastery, where a pure-blood girl named Tamara lives. They lay siege to Shipper, and Tamara is assisted by a monk to escape, who is already aware of the prophecy. When Collar questions the monk, 
he refuses to snitch, and Collar murders him. He immediately sends Ramo, one of his trusted men, to find Tamara. Ramo pursues her and nearly captures her, but his plans are interrupted when Conan comes to her aid. He chases Ramo, and throws an object, knocking him out, and after which, takes him as a hostage. Later that night, Tamara and Conan talk about why he's pursuing Collar, and his plan to lure the enemy with Tamara as bait. Ramo awakens and explains Tamara's worth, and why Collar is interested in her. In exchange for a large sum of gold, he pledges to return and notify Collar of her whereabouts. Conan agrees to let Ramo convey a message, but omits the part of the plot in which he would kill him. The next morning, Conan uses Ramo's corpse to send a note to Collar, requesting that he meet him alone at the shipper outpost to collect the girl, however, it's a trap. When Collar arrives, Conan and Tamara plan to ambush him. Conan rejects Collar's offer of gold, and attacks him. He fights Collar one-on-one -on -one in a sword fight. Marik summons the Sand Warriors, who make life difficult for Conan and Tamara. Marik attacks them with a poison that weakens Conan. This allows Collar to land a lot of blows. In the end, the heroes eventually defeat the sand creatures, and flee to the bay, where Artisan and his crew await them. On the ship, Conan explains to Artis why Collar is after Tamara. Conan intends to pursue him again, but this time, alone. He makes Artis pledge to protect Tamara, and get her securely to the monks. Later that night, Kalar's men attempt to kidnap Tamara. Fortunately, Artis hears and notifies the crew in time, and as a result, they murder Kalar's men in a full-fledged pirate battle. Conan and Tamara fight side by side, and despite not being half the barbarian that Conan is, she does a good job. At dawn, Conan bids them farewell. However, Artis, being a good wingman, lets him go without the map of the shoreline, and then sends Tamara to get it for him. He gives her until the next day to return to the ship. When she finds Conan, she gives him the map. They spend the night together, and she slips back to the Artis's boat the next morning. On her journey back, she is ambushed by Collar and his men once more, but this time Conan is not there to defend her. When Conan learns she's been kidnapped, he tries to track her down in Kalba, but not before enlisting the best man for the job. He asks for help from Allah Shan, the top lock picker in Argalon. Meanwhile, at Kalba, Tamara is at the ritual that will awaken Ashran's mask, and give Collar the power to resurrect his wife. He aims to utilize Tamara's body as a receptacle for his wife's spirit, hoping that the secrets she brings from the kingdom of the dead will make them unbeatable. As a metaphor for their reunion not far from the stronghold, Collar dresses Tamara in the same gown that Maliva wore on her wedding day. Conan and Allah Shan sneak in through tunnels beneath Kalba. They pass underwater, and Allah Shan's skills come in handy when he picks all the locks, and lets them into the citadel. They swim to the top, only to be dragged back down by a gigantic sea monster. Conan fights it off swiftly, and they climb out of the water, and are stunned by what they see, a gigantic room with captives in cages, and a very large garden full of humans being fed to the monster. An enemy then assaults the heroes, and attempts to get them back into the sea for the monster to devour, but this backfires, Conan and Elisha outsmart him and successfully feed the enemy to the monster, who tears him apart instantaneously. They escape from that chamber and ascend the stronghold, where they witness Collar and his legion transporting Tamara to the Skull Cave, where the ritual would be executed. Conan expresses gratitude to Allah Shan, and proceeds on his own. He pursues Collar and enters the cave behind them. He disguises himself as one of the ceremony's participants. Tamara is bound to a massive rock somewhere inside the cave. Marik presents her father with the Sumerian sword she took from Conan's village earlier. Collar then begins the rite, severing Tamara's chest with the blade. He places the mask behind the cut and allows blood to drip onto it. The mask begins to move as though it has come to life, and Kalar places it on his face. He feels the force surge through him, and believes he has finally earned the power from the mask, causing the earth to quiver and the cave to collapse. The mask then begins to summon Maliva, and in the meantime, Conan gets close enough and launches at him. The cave begins to crumble as a result of the huge surge of energy released by the mask, and everyone else at the ceremony flees, leaving only the heroes and villains alone. Tamara's chain is quickly torn from its support, and she is hanging on for dear life. Meanwhile, Conan and Collar are slashing blades at one another. They maintain the pressure, with both parties demonstrating their warrior prowess. When Conan has the opportunity, he slashes the chains that bind Tamara, and frees her. She flees, while the combat resumes. Elsewhere in the cave, Tamara tries to hide, but Marik chases after her. Marik tracks her down, and she has no choice but to confront her. She resists with everything she has, but Marik is too powerful for her. Tamara, 
who has been tied to the ground and is about to have her face scratched off, appears to be doomed, but Conan comes to the rescue, and saves her. He slashes Marie's hand, and Tamara finishes the job, kicking her into the cave's quaking ditch. Marie crashes into the gully and is impaled, dying instantly. Soon, Collar discovers his daughter's body, and becomes even more outraged. He follows Conan and Tamara's route, and catches up with them when Tamara falls from the old wooden bridge leading out. The bridge can't last much longer, and Conan is using all of his remaining power to hold Tamara by a chain with one hand, anchoring to the bridge with the other. Collar catches up with Conan, whose two hands are busy. He resumes the ritual, and summons Maliva. The possession begins, and Tamara, who still has some control over her body, begs Conan to let her go, so that Collar can be defeated. Conan is determined to save Tamara, and when Collar approaches, he rips off the section of the bridge where he stands, causing him to tumble into the ditch and die. The ceremony remains unfinished as a result of his death, and Tamara returns to normal. Conan uses the last of his energy to drag Tamara up the bridge, following which they flee. Conan rides Tamara back to her home and bids her farewell. After many years, he returns to the ruins of his village, to return the sword that Marik stole. There is no casting for it when he arrives, and he recalls what his father promised him, the sword would be his one day, when he was ready for it and understood it. He proudly raises the sword into the air, finally proven himself worthy of it. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.